welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda and today we are going to be doing my June reading wrap up. So this video is going to be a hybrid between the way I used to do reading wrap ups and the way that I am kind of transitioning into doing my reading wrap ups. So before now I was doing a weekly wrap up so I would wrap up at the end of every single week what I had read that week and then I would put them all together into one video and release them for you and it was best for me because I read so many books that I would forget details that I wanted to talk about later in the month and with a lot of the issues that have been happening I've changed how I read books this month and one of the biggest changes that I made is I'm going to be tracking the books that I read and so I would like to be able to present to you those numbers and I'd like to be able to present them to you at the beginning of my wrap-ups. What I'm going to be doing is I will be filming each week in a wrap-up but then in the fourth wrap-up the final week what I'm doing right now is I will come to you at the beginning of the video with all of the deets and the stats and then I will just cut back to each of those weeks you can watch them and then finally we'll return to me talking in all of my grace about the last week. So I read 14 books in the month of June which is fan freaking tastic. I was aiming for 15 so I missed my goal but also um I am way ahead of my yearly reading tracker. Hi, really quickly, editing Amanda here. So I managed to read one more book before the end of the month because absolute freaking nuisance to myself and I seem to do this every other month. So let me really quickly talk to you about that book. So I mentioned, maybe I edited it out, I don't know, that I was in the middle of reading The Wolf of Arn Yarrow and I finished it because it was absolutely so fantastic. I really loved this book. I ended up rating it a 4.75 out of 5 stars and that is simply because there was something at the ending that I didn't totally love. But other than that it was fan-freaking-tastic. So this book follows the wolf queen of this land and she is being sent to she's not being sent she goes to this like neighboring land to speak to her husband who left her five years ago and basically she goes to speak to him to be like diplomatic alliance try to get him back into her life back into her son's life and to help bring peace back to all of the people who live in the lands when she gets there an assassination attempt is made on both of them and she is basically left on the streets trying to figure out who made the assassination attempt who she can trust and where she can get help from. I'm in a rocking chair. I'm sorry if that makes people sick. It was absolutely fantastic. It weirdly enough reminded me a little bit of A Memory Called Empire, even though they are very, very different books. A Memory Called Empire is very sci-fi and space-esque and it's a huge like space opera, whereas this one was very fantasy, very Asian-inspired fantasy book, which was absolutely fantastic. There were references to dragons and magic and mages and all that kind of stuff, but there was just this kind of underlining theme that both of the books have where there's like this woman who is trapped with no one she can trust on a foreign land trying to bring diplomacy and peace to her people and trying to figure out what's going on and who's doing what and whom she can trust and I really enjoy that. The characters were great. They weren't the absolute best thing in the world, but I did really like the main character. I think that she was not supposed to be liked and I liked her for that reason. So it's not that I I liked her. It was that she was well written. That was super confusing. I liked the world a lot a lot. It was really cool and there were some really fascinating cities and some of the different places we got to see were very unique and I enjoyed that immensely but also within each of the cities we saw we got to see more of like the rich side and the poor side so it was just very well developed. The plot and the logic of the world were fine. I had no complaints about either of them. The writing was great. My only complaint is that last little bit at the end which I will not be spoiling. Actually this isn't a spoiler if I tell you a small little detail. So the book opens up on the queen's wedding night and she mentions that there is a man who she has killed and that her husband has fleed. Fled? Fled? fleet one of those you don't find out the man that she kills until the very end of the book and i was totally okay with that i'm fine with you holding off on that until the very end but when she revealed why she killed that man i wasn't a huge fan of it now you can go back to listening to the rest of my books that i read this past month as of right now i have read 91 books for the year i dnf'd 
zero books this month and that is simply because I invented a new category of how books are going to be categorized. So up until this point I could have a book either as read, to be read, currently reading, or DNF'd. And then I added a new category this month which is paused. And so that is a special category for books that I started but wasn't in the mood for or I needed to read something else at the time or I didn't have the right format for it and I needed to switch out of maybe the audiobook or out of the physical book. And so I'm no longer currently reading it but I'm going to be reading it. I made a pause category and there were 10 books put on that shelf but only four of them were put on it from this month's reading. Out of the 14 books that I read, four of them were fantasy, seven of them were YA fantasy, and three of them were graphic novels which fell into the sci-fi or fantasy genre. Out of all of the 14 books that I read, 13 different authors were read because two of the books I read had the same author, which was really weird because he was the only male author I read this month. I read 12 female authors and one male author, so that was kind of a weird thing that happened that I didn't mean for it to happen, but cool. Out of those 13 authors, six of them were authors of color, four of them were physical books, and 10 of them were audiobooks. 12 of them I classified as having a diverse cast. Two books had LGBT plus representation. Three books I wasn't quite sure about, so I gave them a little question mark. 11 books that I read had racial representation, and then two of the books I read had disability representation. Three of them were questionable but I decided not to put them into this category. 11 of the books were in series and overall the average rating that I rated books this month was 3.6. I managed to read books that I owned, were borrowed from the library, and borrowed from Scribd. Right now I am going to cut to the first week and then you'll see the second week and then you'll come back to me for weeks three and four. So starting off from the top Pop. I the first thing I finished this month was the Tales of Beetle the Bard which was I don't know why I'm picking up something I just want to hold things this isn't the book it was an audible original that you could receive for free but only at a specific time like only if you pre-ordered it I think you could get it for free so I got it and what's really cool is I have actually read Beetle the Bard before I read it physically this one was a little bit different because not only was the cast from different Harry Potter movies doing the voice acting, I mean, none of like the main three were doing it, but I think Jude Law did one of them. But also they had these Dumbledore notes, which I ended up actually skipping because one, I'm still pissed off at Dumbledore, but also because they didn't really, they just seemed to be explaining the stories that you just listened to. So I didn't feel like they were really helpful for the narrative of the rest of the story. So the Tales of Beetle the Bard is a collection of basically folks and myths that wizards would have been told as children. So like we as muggles would have been told Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty, they would have been told these tales instead. And I believe that the whole entire idea is like Beetle the Bard is like Mother Goose or like the Grimm Brothers where it's just like a collection of their stories. I enjoyed them. I ended up giving the book a three out of five star because one, I don't like short stories and I don't really like collections of short stories, but there was nothing necessarily wrong with them. So three out of five stars. I felt like they didn't add anything to the Harry Potter universe. I feel like they were just used to make more money and so we're gonna move on after that. The next book that I read, and I also listened to this, Nimona. So I rented this from my library. I'm doing a video on this, so I'm not gonna go really in depth with it. But in order to do that video, I listened to the audiobook, and then I'm planning on also reading the physical book because it is a graphic novel. But what's really cool is the audiobook was actually a full cast produced audiobook and so that was really really awesome. They did a really good job of making me feel like I wasn't missing anything from the graphic novel and helping me understand the story as it was going. I'm going to still be flipping through this to kind of see what the artwork looks like and possibly change my rating if the artwork is worth changing it for but I really don't see myself changing my rating. So I gave this a three out of five star. I also feel like I have a hard time giving graphic novels anything above a three out of five star. They also fall in line with that short story narrative where I'm kind of just like mm, okay there's not really a ton here but that's great. Um, I have given multiple multiple graphic novels four stars and five stars they just really have to be outstanding to me for me to do that so this story follows 
this main girl who is like a sidekick and she wants to be the sidekick to a super villain instead of a hero and it's definitely satire and it's definitely like it's supposed to take place in medieval times but then there's also things like delivery like food delivery and newspapers and tv shows and stuff like that so it's taking like modern day stuff to make medieval times more satirical so she becomes the sidekick to this man who I think his name is Blackheart. One thing that's really cool is he only has one hand so that was awesome and so he has been basically forced into this villainous position because he only has one hand and their enemy who is the hero is this guy whose name I can't remember right now. Golden Loin, that's it. So his name is Golden Loin and they're basically fighting him and what they call the institution which is really funny. There was lots of really funny moments in here and a lot of really good moments. Nimona has the ability to shape shift and she can pretty much shape shift at will. So there's a lot of trying to understand how she got that power and how she came into it and what her backstory is basically. It was heartwarming, but I think that there could have just been a few things done differently to make me like it slightly more. First off, there was definitely, definitely hinting at a gay relationship in here, but nothing was ever actually said. So I'm like not sure if it was supposed to be there or if I'm reading too much into this book or what. So the next thing that I read was The Songs of Race and Ruin was absolutely fantastic. It is a YA fantasy following two POVs. So there's a boy named Malik and there's a girl named Karina and Karina is overcoming the deaths she is the princess of this city town country and she is overcoming the deaths of her father and sister and now she is next in line to rule after her mother and then really closely to the beginning of the book her mother is also killed and she is thrown into this power and she basically is having a power struggle with the other court that is supposed to rule with her. Now there is this giant competition that is happening in this town and so they have basically been like here's your little pet project go over there and do that and we'll run the country for you blah blah blah. Now Karina has found an old book that has taught her the magic of how to bring someone back from the dead but one of the things she needs to do that is the heart of a king. Now because she's a queen she doesn't have that heart so she decides to make the reward for winning this competition her hand in marriage so that she can hopefully marry a boy because that is part of the plot, kill him, take his heart and bring her mother back from the dead. Now we're also following Malik. He is basically a refugee in this land and him and his two sisters have come to this city to hopefully get jobs because while this whole entire competition is going on, lots of people are hiring. So his younger sister, who is about six years old, somehow gets taken by a demon. If you read the book, you'll find out. I'm not saying somehow because I don't know. I'm saying somehow because it's complicated. And she gets taken by a demon king and the only way for Malik to release her is he has to kill Karina and then his sister is free. So he decides to basically get himself the champion of, is it Earth? wind or fire. Basically the champion of one of the seven elements in this land and he is going to be competing in this competition to get close enough to Karina to kill her. And of course Karina is trying to help get a man, which Malik is, into the winning position so that she can kill him. It was good. It was really good. I ended up rating it four out of five stars and everything about it was absolutely fantastic and I loved all of it. I think there was like one small thing that I had a complaint about but if you want to know what that is you can go check out that video. So the book that I read was Sunbolt and I cannot remember who the author is right now. This was something that I picked up because I was searching for fantasy specific books written by authors of color and I cannot remember where the author is from but she's awesome first off. She's only written like three books and a few short stories but I picked up this one because it was only about 200 pages long and it was something I figured I could read in between reading The Prior of the Orange Tree when I was on breaks and I loved it. I loved it. I cannot express to you enough how much I loved it. I have been contemplating putting it into my favorites shelf on Goodreads and honestly I have done it this morning. It was so good. I cannot believe that I enjoyed this book that much. I ended up rating it five out of five stars. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it except this one paragraph where the dialogue was so weird and funky. It was between like these two like villains talking to each other and I was just like that was some weird dialogue right there. But other than that one paragraph every single part of this book 
was gold and I loved it. I loved it so much. So I'm really glad I picked up this book before totally knowing what it was about because if I had known what it was about, I would have never picked up this book because it's about vampires. <laughs> I don't know if you know this about me, but I am like anti-vampire. I'm like anti-werewolf. I don't like reading paranormal things when it relates to those kinds of things. Like if it's paranormal talking about ghosts and demons, I'm there for it. But if it's paranormal talking about vampires and werewolves, I don't care. I just don't care. This book made me realize that maybe I should care a little bit more because it was so good. So in this book, we're following this girl called Hitomi, and I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. She goes by Tomi sometimes, and she is living on this, I believe it's an island. And so if I am correct, and I am so sorry if I am not, the island is basically based off of some country in the Middle East. I was kind of feeling like it had some influences from India, but it might have been somewhere else. I'm not as familiar with the differences between some of those countries that I should be. And she was really cool is I believe she is half whatever this culture is supposed to be and then half Japanese. The other country that they talk about a lot in this book was very much descendant of Japanese culture. That one was super obvious for me. So she doesn't necessarily fit in because she doesn't look like a lot of the other people in this land. And she is an orphan. She's poor. She's on the street and she's running with this gang, I guess you should call them. And she's helping them basically do better things in this country because their sultan is basically being controlled by this military force called, is it the Black Hawks? I don't think that's right, but it was something like that. And this gang is basically trying to stop them any way they can. And so at the very beginning of the story, Hitomi is joined by this friend of hers that she's known a long time, who is the leader of this organization. His name is The Ghost and they are going to rescue this rich family that the Sultan is going to kill. And they, in the process of trying to rescue them, Hitomi gets captured by this man who sells her to a vampire. <laughs> so I hate even telling you guys that much because honestly what I just told you is like the first 50% of the book, but the second 50% of the book, if I tell you anything about it, will spoil everything from the first 50%. But I'll tell you right now, I love this book. I, I loved it. I, I, I don't know how many times I have to tell you that I loved it, but I did. I don't have any other words. But also I will say that some of the things I liked were personal preference, such as there was no romance in this book at all. There was never even a hint of romance. Also the, like it was so good because it was pure. Hitomi could have friendships with these other male characters and it could be friendship. It didn't have to be anything else. And that's what I loved about it. She wasn't forced into this position of like, oh, you're someone's girlfriend or oh, you're someone's wife. It was, she was who she was. And she had all these great, friends and support systems. Also, I think that if I ever wrote a book, it would be something similar to this because I absolutely loved that she went through so many characters' lives. Like, how do I describe this? I feel like a lot of times with YA specifically, but it happens in all books, to be honest. You get like the cast of main characters that you're gonna be following, and then you get a cast of side characters. And then like you have them interact with each other and shuffle like around each other. But beyond that, there's really no one else. And you never seem to like leave people behind and then come across new people. So this book, she is definitely interacting with like a few people in the beginning and then in the middle she's interacting with a few different people and we've left those other people and then at the end it's even different people and we've left all of those people behind. Like these people are not threaded through the entire story. We get their character arc or at least the parts we're gonna see in this book in their section and then she's interacting with new people who are getting new arcs and then new people and this happens like four or five times throughout the book where we meet new characters and then we just abandon them basically and i loved it it was so fresh and original and it felt so real like real life you meet people and then you don't see them for a few years or you don't see them ever again possibly and how sad that is yeah it sucks but like that's just how life is you know it's not perfectly rounded and capped off and i loved that oh my god it was so good to read i think what i really enjoyed about this book is it didn't remind me of another book i had read it was so new to me and you know what maybe that's because i haven't read tons and tons of books by authors of color. When I am branching out, I'm going to come across more books like this, but it was great. I'm definitely moving on to the sequel. I'm a little bit bummed because the author says there's going to be four books and she's only written two of them. 
and the last one was written years and years and years ago. So hopefully I can get a bunch of people to read it. She'll be able to finish book three because I want to read it. I would have liked some more explanation to the magic system. It really felt like Hitomi could do whatever she wanted, but then sometimes she couldn't. So some more explanation there would have been great, but honestly, I brushed all of that aside because it was such an enjoyable read. Whew! Whew! Oh! Okay, so let me give you guys a really quick sneak peek for what next week is gonna look like because this video is already gonna be so dang long. So next week I'm going to hopefully be reading on with The Priory of the Orange Tree. I'm hoping not to finish it, but I'm gonna be reading on with it. <clears throat> and then I'm also hoping to read all nine volumes of Saga. Saga? Saga? Saga, that's how I'm gonna say it. Um, yeah, I have all nine volumes from my library, so I'm hoping to read on with those. Um, that's not the first one. And then I, and then I'm gonna be picking up a few other things, but I don't have those totally planned out in the order that I'm going to read them. So you'll find those out as you keep watching. I would have liked some more explanation to the magic system. It really felt like Hitomi could do whatever she wanted, but then sometimes she couldn't. So some more explanation there would have been great, but honestly, I brushed all of that aside because it was such an enjoyable read. Okay, week two. So I'm currently still reading Priory of the Orange Tree. I finished right off the bat at the beginning of the week, Crown of Feathers, which is a kind of Mulan-esque retelling. I read it for one of my videos that'll be coming out in July. So I didn't read this with any like thought in mind about race or representation, ethnicity, anything like that. I do believe the book takes place in South America inspired fantasy land as there are lots of references to llamas, which was really fun. But I can't exactly tell you where it takes place because the author, I like everywhere I looked online, I couldn't find like an exact example of what she was referencing, but that's fine. I ended up rating the book four out of four stars. It was very enjoyable and I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it. I will go into heavy detail about this book in the video it's going to be coming out in. It'll be for the third Guess My Rating Challenge. The next book that I read was Vicious and this was a reread and this is the third time I have read Vicious and I loved it just as much as the first two times. I read Vicious basically once a year. I would read it more if I would allow myself to but I try to keep it to one time a year and so this is the third year that I've owned the book so the third time I have read it and I loved it. This book follows Victor Vale and his college roommate Eli Everett Car and they basically have found out, have proven through their college thesis, senior thesis, whatever you want to call it, that EOs, extraordinary humans, exist in the world and they are trying to figure out how to make themselves become ones. And so you follow dual timelines where there is one timeline where Victor has just gotten out of prison and he is basically hunting Eli down to kill him because of something that has happened. The other one, which is them in college being really good friends and trying to figure out how to get these gifts. I absolutely love the book. It is so, so dark, very gray characters. Like you're sitting there rooting for Victor the entire time, but also like it's really hard to root for Victor sometimes because he flat out tortures a cop in one scene and it's violent and bloody and awful but also you're sitting there like yeah victor vale is the summation of all of my intrusive thoughts and so it's really nice to watch intrusive thoughts like go to fruition i rated it again five out of five stars it's a classic if you haven't checked it out i highly recommend you do so the third book i read this month and that's why i'm doing this video in the car because i'm about to drop it up to the library is saga volume one so this is a graphic novel by brian k Vagan, Vagan. I read Paper Girls, which is also by him last month, and I enjoyed Paper Girls. I gave most of them a three out of five star. So I started Saga, Saga. I don't know how to say it because I'm from the South and we would say Saga, but that sounds gross. I enjoyed it. I felt like it could definitely have been better. Let's start with the art style. So I didn't think the art style was anything super impressive like it was absolutely good when you broke down the anatomy and everything that is being shown it was very clear but there wasn't any like real character in the art style like it was just comic book art style it didn't have anything special to add to it and then the story is following this couple 
as they are, their people are enemies in a war and they have recently gotten married, had a child, they are being hunted by both sides and a few other sides and basically to be killed and then everyone kind of wants their baby who they've just had. So I don't know exactly the reason why they want their baby yet, but everyone wants their baby and they are running away from this. And so the book talks a lot about racism, bigotry, all of that kind of stuff that you would expect from two nations at war with each other. It's really cool. It does involve some sci-fi and fantasy elements, which is awesome. And it also had a wide range of characters. And I think they did a good job of giving each character enough time for you to really start to understand them and start to kind of root for them a little bit. I have decided after reading the first one that at least for right now, I'm not going to continue on with the rest of them. So I'm actually gonna return all of them to my library. I had kind of a hard time after reading Paper Girls and realizing that every single person who worked on Paper Girls was male and it's supposed to be this story of like teenage girls coming together and like rooting like women are great all that stuff right so like that kind of rubbed me a little bit wrong this one the artist is female which is awesome but I'm, I don't think I'm in the mood for graphic novels right now and so I don't think that this is something that I should force myself to read. And since I am actively making an effort to read more books by authors of color, and I'm not in the mood to read this one, and this is not written or created by anyone of color, I'm going to put it aside for the time being. There wasn't really anything that hooked me enough either in the opening story where I was like, oh, I really wanna know what happens with this. I felt like I enjoyed some of the characters and I'm curious to know what's going to happen to them but not enough that I feel compelled to continue on with the rating I gave the book. It had a lot of really good things to say and it wasn't like it was bad, it just wasn't pulling me into it. So I'm gonna start off this week instead of going into directly what I read, we're gonna talk about the books that I am in the middle of that will have to continue on into next month. And so that is going to be The Wise Man's Fears by Patrick Ruthis. I'm listening to this on audio, but I also have the physical book to help me get through it. I'm not loving it, but I'm going to try to keep pushing through and hope that it picks up because right now it just feels like nothing's really happening. But I will save talking about this book when I've actually finished it. The next one that I want to quickly talk about is one that I have put on pause this month, and that is The Obsidian Tower by Melissa Caruso. So I am enjoying this book, but I was reading it in a slumpy time period, and it wasn't a fantastic book. I think it'll get a rating between a three and a 3.5. So I wasn't wanting to continue on with it because it was slow, and I wasn't enjoying it enough, and it was kind of I was already in a slump and it wasn't helping. And then there are three more books I put on pause and that is Legacy of Ash. And I paused that because it was too similar to The Priory of the Orange Tree. I also put The Shadow Wand on pause because I was not enjoying it. I'm like really questioning whether or not I'm going to finish it. And then the final one I put on pause was Saga Volume 3. And that is simply because I um, kind of hate some of the new characters that were introduced into the third volume. There's kind of this weird like news reporter thing happening and I don't like that or care about it at all. I really didn't love the second one which I'll talk about next so I, I that might become a DNF but it's so short that I'm gonna try to push through and at least finish the third one and then call it quits after that. Moving on the first book that I finished in those two final weeks was The Priory of the Orange Tree and I did a whole video where you can watch me reading this book. I read it for whoop I read it for Olivia Reads a Latte's Priory read along and I'm so glad I did because that is how I met the people that are now in my book club. This book was a behemoth of a book that I have tried reading three times now and the third time was the charm and I finished it. I didn't manage to talk a ton in my video about specific thoughts because I didn't want to spoil too many of you but I have some things to say now about it. I'm gonna set this down though because it's really heavy. So I really enjoyed the characters in the book. There were four POVs that you follow throughout this fantasy realm where they're on the brink of war, dragons are coming back and going to destroy the land, and you're kind of following four different people as they are across this land 
figuring things out if you want a better summary. Just go on Goodreads. It's kind of hard to summarize and I don't think I did it accurately in my other video either so don't bother trying to find it there. I really liked two of the characters and I didn't really like two of them that we followed and then about halfway through the book it kind of switched where I still liked one of them that I had originally liked but I was no longer liking one of those. But I still think they were all really well written and I think that they were very diverse and I think that the characters that we weren't following, so the side characters, I also really really enjoyed. Atmosphere of the book was super fantastic. I loved this world, I loved the world building, that was probably the best part about these books and it was also super confusing but really really enjoyable. The writing was good but not great. I think that Samantha Shannon and I just don't get along super well with how she writes. There were lots of parts where it felt too long. It felt like we followed one specific character way more than the rest of them and I didn't like that. And there were also major chunks of the book that felt very YA even though this is not a YA book. Overall it wasn't bad but I just don't think it was the greatness that many people are making it out to be. I do think that it is going to do fantastic things for the standalone fantasy genre even though Samantha Shannon is disappointing me and saying that she's going to be writing more books in this universe so turning it into a series. I really love standalone fantasy books and there's not enough of them out there in the world so I think this one could hopefully inspire some other authors to write standalone fantasy books that have such amazing representation like this one does. Plot was great. There were some slow parts especially in part two, three, and four but parts one, five, and six were absolutely fantastic and I really enjoyed them. The logic of the world made sense. There really wasn't any loopholes or anything that seemed to stand out to me as wrong but I mean maybe I missed something super obvious. I really enjoyed myself reading it. There were definitely some moments that I wasn't enjoying myself. There were a few like twists and turns that I thought were dumb and kind of ridiculous but still I enjoyed it. I think this is a memorable read even though I don't think it deserves the hype that it got and I do think that I would reread it although it would have to be a long time from now because it is such a big one and I really want to get to some other big fantasies out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more thing I want to talk about is I have changed the way I write books. So the first half of the month is going to be very different from the second half of the month. So I kind of took the cop pile method and I reach wrote it, rechanged it to what I kind of focus on when reading books. So I have some of her categories and then some of my own and then I got rid of a few of her categories. So that has helped me talk about and rate books in a different way so that I can get more to the point with you all and get to what really you want to hear about a book. If you've noticed a difference in like the first half of this video to the second half of this video, that is why. The next book I read was Vengeful and that is the sequel to Vicious and while I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the first book, I still- oh my god I never told you what I rated Orange Tree. I rated Orange Tree four out of five stars. I still ended up rating this book five stars because it was just shy of the first one but it was still very very good. It was still fantastic but just not quite as fantastic as Vicious was. So the characters were not as vibrant as in the first book. I think we miss a lot of their like younger days stuff and how they like came to be who they are. You still see some of it specifically with one character who I'm not going to name but you miss a lot of the stuff that I loved in the first one, although V.E. Schwab does give us other stuff that I love in this one that we didn't have in the first one. The atmosphere is still fantastic, the writing is still fantastic, the plot is still fantastic and twisty and turny. It's just that it's not quite the same as the first one. I know some people don't like this book but I really enjoyed it. I think it is very good and worth a read and I'm really excited to be moving on to the third one. Vengeful follows- oh my god I can't tell you what Vengeful is about. If I tell you what Vengeful is about it will spoil the ending of Vicious so I'm sorry I can't give you a summary about that one but you're following more stuff in the world from Vicious. I can't even tell you who's in vengeful because it'll spoil the ending of Vicious. So the next book I read was Kingdom of Souls and I read this for a guess my rating challenge video so I won't be going into detail here about that. That video is not going to be coming out for a little bit so I don't even know if I should tell you anything about it. I'll tell you right now I didn't love it. I 
didn't end up enjoying that book and I will go into great detail in that video about why I didn't like it. The next book I read was The Boneless Mercies which I also did not enjoy. It was very short and that's why I picked it up and it sounded like it was going to be very feminist because it follows this world where these women can go into this kind of like a cult but it's like bands of people across this world who are called the boneless mercies and they go town to town and if you want to have a mercy killing done they will do it so like they will not kill your husband if he's beating you but if your husband has a horrible skin condition and he's dying slowly and terribly and you're afraid that it's going to spread to lots of other people they will come in and kill him for you so you follow this one clan of boneless mercies as they're kind of realizing that they don't want to necessarily be doing this anymore and so they are trying to figure out what else they could be doing but they don't have enough money or respect from other people to do anything else so they kind of have to go on this journey for these other people to earn a way out of doing it it just wasn't great um the characters were okay but not anything like super fantastic honestly there were a few issues i had like they kind of don't delve into too much there's a man in their group but like men aren't allowed in their group and they don't i thought that was going to be like more of a topic to talk about because one of the other things that they talk about is there's this other group of like clans people who roam around and all they do is like freely live off the land but they can only be boys and so i thought they were going to talk about that and then there were specific times where they would talk about like oh a girl decided to change and dress as a man so she could be part of that group and they allowed her to do it until she got pregnant so i thought maybe they were going to talk about like trans people in this book and then that really wasn't how they went with it so i didn't enjoy that those topics weren't talked about like they should have been broached the atmosphere was okay but i wish the world was explored more i just I felt like as I was going I cared less and less and less about this book. The writing was not good, I didn't enjoy it, the plot was confusing and all over the place and jumbled and I also did not enjoy that. The logic of the world was none. As I've kind of talked about with the like gender thing there were some other issues that I had similarly to that where I just didn't like the logic. It, it didn't make any sense in this world. My enjoyment was pretty much none. I don't think I will remember this book come the end of the year and I would not reread this book ever. So I ended up rating that book two out of five stars and honestly I think that two is kind of generous. So the next book I read was Saga Volume 2 and I feel like I kind of spoiled that for you because I talked about Volume 3 earlier. So I know I said I wasn't going to continue on with these volumes but one night I had like an hour and I really wanted to read and I was in a slump and I just wasn't wanting to pick anything up. So I picked up volume two and I've already talked about volume one so I'm not gonna tell you what volume two is about. And I read it and I liked it less than volume one. I just, I don't love the characters in it. The world is pretty cool so that's awesome. The writing is okay. I honestly don't think that it's that great and even if I were to look at it through the lenses of it's a graphic novel because I tend to have a hard time with writing in graphic novels because it's so short and chopped up and just dialogue. Even if I looked through it looked at it through like those goggles I still wouldn't think it's that great. I've definitely read other graphic novels that have way better writing than this one. I didn't like the plot in the second book. It felt like nothing really happened and we didn't really go anywhere and we focused way more on certain characters than other ones whereas the first book was divided more evenly and I liked that. The logic of the world is still very confusing to me. I'm not sure who can do what or why or really anything at all about that like it seems that some magic is explained and some of it isn't and maybe it would be explained to me later on but I'm just not caring enough to find out. I'm not enjoying myself and I do think that this would be memorable and simply for the fact that it's so short I do think that maybe one day I would try rereading these to see if my opinion has changed but overall that does mean that I rated the book three stars although it is very very close to being a two star read. Honestly I almost want to rate it a 2.5 but the math argues that I have to rate it a three so it's a three. I read Spin the Dawn which was also for my guess my reading 
challenge, which will be coming out in July. And I don't even want to tell you what happened with this book because I think it'll be best if you go into that video not knowing my thoughts because it's kind of an adventure to go on. So I'm not going to tell you what I ended up thinking or rating that book. If you're absolutely like super curious, go on my Goodreads. I rated it there. And then finally, the last book that I read this month was Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee and I did a whole entire video on this where I went very in depth with it and talked to you about it. It was like a mini guess my rating challenge video. I loved this book. I really really enjoyed it. If you want to know the summary and all of my detailed thoughts about the book go to that video because all I'm going to tell you right now is I ended up rating it a five star because dang that was really a surprise, surprisingly good book for me. Those are all the books that I read in June. I did read and I read more than I needed to this month. So that's great. And I'm proud of myself. And even if I had read one book, I should be proud of myself because reading is reading. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books. I'd love to talk to you about them. And I'm also going to try to include my tracker down below. I'm working on how you guys can see that without being able to edit it. So it might not be up right now, but I'm going to get it up as quickly as possible for you all. Thanks for watching. I don't remember how my outro goes, but until next time, I will talk to you all in the comments. Bye.